Welcome back to the I Jupiter Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Franklin, and today we have on a Mr. Bradley Lale. I had to record this in post because I forgot to push record. Uh, for some reason, it didn't click on. And another problem I was experiencing this one, this one and another podcast that I was doing was the, the microphone I just bought that's over there doesn't work. Um, it's making an awful hum. I didn't hear it on my end, uh, but my guests did hear it. Uh, and I didn't hear it until after they were recorded. Um, I'm trying to fix the situation. I've contacted the company. I've looked to see what, uh, what do they call those things? What drivers I need, um, restart the computer, um, this, that, and the other, one on Reddit, one on Quoka, whatever it's called, all these question things. But none of it, none of it happens. So this one is not going to be up to the standards that I like. Um, this microphone itself is not very well or very good, excuse me, better said. But, you know, I'm doing my very best, and I promise you to bring, bring you the best quality content and the best, the best guests and the most interesting conversation you can hear on the Internet. Anyhow, without further ado, welcome to the Iowa Jupiter Podcast, Mr. Bradley Leo. Yeah, man. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And we were talking before the show, and you told me uh, you were a veteran, dude, so thank you very much for your service, dude. Thank you very much, yeah. too. Those uninitiated, Tom made a big boo boo, and we had to start over again. So I got to do some post, like production on this one. Anyhow, dude, thank you a lot. Are you a former army veteran the army, or I was in the Air Force, man. I was in for eight years. Air Force, dude. I don't know, man. All yeah. right, you guys had all the good equipment, running on treadmills and stuff. Yeah, we did. We didn't have we that. Definitely had it easier, dude. Yeah, we, we, how was your PT test? Did you guys actually run? <laughs> yeah, we did, man. Matter of fact, uh, I was stationed at McDill Air Force Base in Tampa, and I used to work on an Army General staff. I worked, matter of fact, I worked on an Army General and a Marine General staff. So um, I, I had I've been in a joint environment probably more than I've been in anything. But to be honest with you, like I was in a cushy environment there because I was working on a general staff. So we got treated like royalty a lot of times, man. So, but we, but the, yeah, but you had a lot of responsibility because the responsibility is the PT is to do it yourself. Yeah, oh yeah. Because so if you didn't do it and they go to test you, they're going to make you do some remedial PT, which was messed up for me because I would always be a fast runner. My problem was sit ups because I'm six foot three. Oh, really? So, you know, all the little chubby people and the shorter people could do sit ups, but I couldn't. So I do like, you know, I think I had to do 50, 52, 53, and I was always getting like 50, 51. That I'm going remedial PT, but that was me to run. I'm like, yo, I can run. I'm running 13 and a half minute two mile runs here. I mean, I can run. So I'm all down there with like these, you know, like slower, like fat people. I, I'm, I'm just really work, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I'm supposed to be doing sit ups. And so, yeah, so that's a lot. You think it's cushy, but like when I was in Kosovo, we were responsible for doing our own PT. And if you messed up and you had your PT test, they would get you. So, yeah, dude. So it's, it's harder than you think. Yeah, and in work working on the uh, general staff, man, he uh, he actually got to that was the that was the worst part in the world. So. <laughs> so, sorry for those who do not know who you are, Bradley. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and where we can find you? Sure, man. Yeah, you can find me at uh, theawakenpodcast.com. dot com. Again, my name is Bradley Lale or Brad. Um, I uh, just I'm kind of in the middle of tweaking my website and adding things to different uh, podcast platforms. Currently, I'm only on Spotify and I'm only on Rumble, but I'm going to be I, I do have a YouTube channel, but I'm going to I'm only going to be uploading clips from my show to both because um, the audio seems to work better and, and reach more people than uh, the video does. But I do like having clips so people can get to know the or get to see at least some of the people I'm talking to. So, yeah, you can find me at theawakenpodcast.com and um, and for currently Spotify. But hopefully I'll be on Apple Podcasts and all that stuff in the next few days. So very interesting because I don't have any anything audibly at the moment because I be in Mexico, you can't get my time. But it's a good way to drive traffic your direction, so I will be doing that. And I also just recently started Rumble Channel because I want to get into some deeper stuff. Because on YouTube, you know, there's a lot of things you can't say, mm -hmm. and uh, that's probably why you started over on Rumble. Is it? I mean, am I in the, in the ballpark? Yeah, dude, I, I do uh, digital marketing and web design for a living. So I saw the, some of the shit they were doing, like 
many years ago. Back in 2008, 2010, 2012, I was seeing a lot of the censorship happening back then. I saw a lot of stuff happening um, in commercials and stuff that, you know, you start seeing things in commercials these days. Pe only, only now people are noticing what I noticed 12, 15 years ago. So, um, so I, I, after the 2020 election, um, I decided to get off all social media because it started getting real scary for, for anybody who had any differing opinions about anything. So I got off of everything. I ditched. I mean, I had so many people I was connected to on LinkedIn and Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and all this and just literally wiped everything clean because I was like, not that I was doing anything wrong. I just, uh, I made a post one day about some, about uh, Obama's former Organizing for Action, um, o OFA. It became, it was Obama for America, then it became Organizing for Action whenever he, he left office. And it was pretty much an activist uh, nonprofit. And I posted something about it in 2020 and Facebook deleted it. So I thought, oh, wow. maybe this is, maybe this is like a, you know, an accident. Maybe I didn't post it. So I posted it again and they deleted it again within, within just a few minutes of me posting it. So it was like, it was almost like it was already, you know, the algorithm was, or somebody was already watching and making sure that we didn't post anything that they didn't, they didn't approve of, you know, and, and I knew that stuff had been going on, but when it happened to me, it became a different thing. Now it became like, all right, now I'm about to join the fight because now I'm pissed off. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what I got to me was, was like, I would post something on Facebook, whatever, and we get no traction. Then I would post like a cat picture or something and that would get a ton of traction. It's like, and you know, like if you post too many times on Facebook, you get less, you know, so you have to do it like every other day or whatever, you, whatever you feel. And you realize like, okay, these, these ones are a little bit more edgy people and like they're, 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 you know, pushing them down, they're kind of shadow banging. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. And um, it's just insane. I just don't, you know, this is, they're going to have to change that in the Constitution. I, think. And I don't know if that would go through because the powers that be. Yeah, I had a I had a woman on my show who mentioned that maybe they're purposely slowing down our awakening process for our own good. But I, you know, I have this gut feeling that um, it's just pure evil and intent that they have. Oh, they don't want us, you know. That's a psyop. That's probably a psyop. Yeah. That's probably so, you know, I. Uh, I'm just cautious about everything now, man. And and I became, I've I've been awakening for you know since 2012 or probably even way sooner than that. I've always kind of bucked the system my whole life. About you know even when I was in the military, I didn't do things exactly the same way as everybody else, and some people didn't like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's more and dog especially, and pony too. It's a lot of dog and pony in the military. Yeah. More than actual like you know I spent like half of my time in the military and damn motorboat, just like cleaning out into the trucks with cat litter at my camo and refolding it and just mm -hmm. I, I don't understand I know you have to like deep out already but sometimes I just thought it was like crazy like they would do things like like okay what are you guys like not doing anything for like oh the trucks are clean we did all our PCS you know our friend from that PC and everything was good we have all our equipment everything was ready to go we just had our antennas out yesterday so you know what's the big deal and then like the sergeant came to me and said well throw a spark of trucks they the oil's going to leak on the ground. Like, yeah, but they have something to do. And I'm like, and the taxpayers are paying for that. You know what I mean? I mean, like, aren't we supposed to be doing, we can even be doing PT as far as I'm concerned. You know what I'm saying? It's just things like that always bothered me. And, like, when you see it from the inside, there's a lot of things that you don't like about it. And then you have people who have very positive experiences, but those people are more in, like, you know, like Delta Forces or uh, Delta Forces, Delta Force or. Seals or something like that. The people who are on the front lines, they get like the really cool action. But the people like me who were like support, I was a signal guy in the military. It's like a lot of like looking pretty and making sure your uniform is pressed than to actually be, you know, like a, an army soldier. So that always bothered me. Yeah, and and I started getting I I uh, I'm like that too. I started noticing a lot of that dog and pony stuff, but but also. I also started noticing a lot of fake um, patriotism and bravery that they would um, trick us into, right? To make us think that, like you could see behind me, 
um, up here behind me, I have a little shadow box from when I was in. It's about seven rows of of uh, decorations and medals. And as I got out, and I'm proud of everything. I, I worked hard for everything I have, and so does everybody in the military. But <clears throat> it almost feels like they were they were conditioning us to believe to to because we're doing a lot of things overseas that we shouldn't be doing. You know what I mean? And they were they were conditioning us to just all the time just you know be proud of that just be proud of the things we're doing and and you and you do and listen i i'm not i'm not dogging anybody in the military i you know we we do so many things overseas humanitarian mission missions and stuff like that that people never see right constantly i mean con i mean i remember i was in, i was stationed in turkey um in 2004 when the when the uh, floods happened and i mean when the tsunami happened in thailand and man we just did we were like a hub of just nonstop humanitarian aid and that stuff goes on a lot more often than than not so i'm not i'm not being derogatory towards the military i'm very proud as you can see everything behind me um displayed proudly but i think they condition us to believe they condition us for everything they condition us to hurry up and wait they condition oh, us to the dead <laughs> The dog and pony show stuff, man. It was a mental, it was a psychology game that they played on us all the time. It was probably a new because um, we were talking about, I got out too late 2002 when we started in 2003. That's when the Iraq war all kicked off. And everything. There yeah. Was, there was, because I, I kind of recognized it too. Like, you know, I, it was just, there was something in the air. They were like, you know, get your freedom deployment packets ready, uh, get your, um, get your will and testament ready. And I'm like, why? They were talking about doing an MLS stoppage, which is your job in the military, occupational specialty. And they were like, oh, we're going to have a short stoppage on this and get your free protein. So this is like, what was that, like April, May, June, I can't remember exactly. And I was like, wait a minute, they're, they're gearing up for something. And this is this is before, I think, even like the UN councils with uh, Colin Powell and all that stuff, where they were talking about the riot and all that, which we all know now is seemingly fake. I always got to make sure I add things that it, com it comes off as if it wasn't to be real. And therefore, we were like kind of duped into doing something that we shouldn't have been doing for, you know, uh, possible stockholders and things of companies that and we all know that. This is, this is, yeah. this is, this is not like knowledge that no one has. But when you're in the machine, in the machine, it's, it has its own its own special set of teeth and when you kind of were able to get out because I remember being my PCS days which is when you're permanent to change of station in other words not PCS ETS when you're leaving out of the military man I drove I think 24 hours straight from I was driving from Kansas back to Maryland where I'm from and I drove until I was tired I just pulled over and crashed in a hotel and then drove the rest of the way I just could not get away fast enough. it was very hard <laughs> So um, I was a I was a combat photographer in the Air Force, and that's why I was attached to an Army general and a Marine general, because I ended up being their photographer. But I before that, I'd deployed a lot. I'd been over, you know, I'd uh, been stationed in Turkey, like I said. Um, but the photographers work under the public relations umbrella, and and so so basically, we're you know telling stories when we deploy we're, we're taking pictures of things and we're sending we're telling our own story we're you know and we're being the um we're kind of beating to beating like new york times photographers to the punch right because we have or we have access to these environments that they don't they, they have to embed in our with our soldiers and sailors and airmen and marines and um we didn't we already had some somebody on, on standby but so we can kind of write the narrative of what we wanted to portray. Like if we, you know, it was always about hearts and minds. It's an information war. It's always an information war. It's you know? more that sometimes than it is the actual physical conflict. I would say it's, it's yes, probably 70% it, of it is that, is that. Just guessing. Yeah, and that's what, and that's what I noticed more. It, it, it kind of jaded me a lot more because, you know, I would have meetings. I, I was a staff sergeant when wow. I got out. Um, I'm but I, I would have. have to like over 10 to get that. No, I was in eight. I was in eight years, and um, but I had a line number for E six, which is I was at E five when I got out. But I was I had a line number for E six, so I made below the zone. I got promoted to E four early, and then I got promoted to E five early, and then I got promoted to E six. I had a line number for E six pretty early, but 
the point of saying that about my job is that, you know, I would have access to high ranking, you know, uh, public relation officers like colonels and, you know, one star generals and stuff like that. And, and often the kind it was, it was ridiculous, man. Cause often the conversation would be, um, you know, how, how can, uh, how can, uh, we, what story can we tell? And it always went back to dogs for some reason to, for them. We gotta, we gotta show military working dogs all the time. I'm like, what the hell is going on, man? Like there's so many stories we could tell. And I think that, that's how I eventually got, um, you know, into working on a personal staff of an army general and a, and a Marine general, because, you know, I was kind of always like, man, man, there's so much more we could be doing. Why are we constantly pushing out the same stuff? And it just, it always, it just always seemed like a show. Nothing ever seemed, nothing ever seemed real. I guess that's what I'm trying to tell you about the decorations and all that stuff is it just always felt like right. a show. It always felt like a show. Like, you know, people still, they get ready and they go and they show a force, they go deploy somewhere in a, in a zone and they don't do anything and then they turn around and leave. It's just, it's, it's just a weird game that seems to be always played. And we were always the chess pieces, right? right? It was like, nobody, we, we didn't have to, nobody else had to worry about anything. We were the ones who had to, um, you know, embrace the suck of it. We were the ones who had to sleep in tents and do, do things. And, uh, you know, for me working on, on a big staff, I was the lowest ranking. So I had to drag bags and load planes and then also do my job all wow. day and um, try to process images at night. And, but the point is, man, is it just always felt like it was a show all the time. It never felt like anything was authentic. And like I said before, I, I kind of just, I've always bucked the system with anything, with school, with church, with military. I mean, I think most people who do this stuff probably uh, feel the same way. That's why I started doing what I do. That's why I started, I decided to start my own podcast was because I felt like um, for one, I missed the military life because we had yes. camarader camaraderie and, you know, we, we had friends, we had people who, who were in the suck with us, like I still said. People, I bet and, you're still uh, people in the military that you were in contact with today that you would be in the foxhole with in a second. Where you, you know everything yeah, about of course, them, man. you know where yeah. they grew up, you know their mom's name, yeah. you know their children, you know, Thanksgiving you would be together yeah. and you know the, the sweat yeah. off their brows and what they did to make sure that you were safe and what you did to make sure that they're safe. And that is what a lot of people are missing in today's world. And especially with the fakery yeah. or the supposed fakery of the news cycle. We know that you know, we know that these 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 news companies are companies and they have stockholders. So if you're a part of any company, there's that infinite growth concept that every company is under, which you have to reach ten percent more profit every year. And if you don't do it, they're the, the person at the top of the, what they call that, the CEO of the company is basically liable under the law to kind of be prosecuted for it. And that's crazy to me. So, so the, the connection, I think that these podcasts do, uh, you know, I mean, especially if you can kind of get a community, I don't want like-minded people. I don't want that. I just want people to be able to say and feel and express what they want without being like, you know, like ravenously negative. That, that, that I don't need. That's just, that's just silly and uh, it's very, uh, you know, primate brain and not prefrontal cortex. You know, if you can be angry, but you need to, you need to be able to funnel that and be, you know, come up with some type of solution or at least be like, hey, you know, I'm seeing this. What do you guys think about it? And I think that camaraderie maybe can be expressed within these podcasts. Yeah, it's a it's a community that I. Um has welcomed me with open arms, man. I mean, from everybody from Sam Tripoli to uh, Tony Merkel to oh, Mark Tony Steves Merkel. to, yes. And um, from the guys from the Nephilim Death Squad. And I mean, dude, everybody's been so amazing. Emily Moyer, um, J uh, Jim Lee. So far, everybody's been super, super amazing. And they haven't treated me like I'm, you know, a new guy and uh, guys like you and uh, guys who've been doing this for a long time. And you know, and I'm super appreciative of that. And not only they have they treated me well, like welcomed me, but they've also been like, how can I help you? And um, that's why I'm I'm like you, man. I'm like, I'll, I'll, I'm willing to talk to everybody and anybody who wants to talk to me, who wants to hear what I have to say about it. Because, you know, I started noticing things a long time ago and I would, I found myself over the years emailing people and trying to tell them, hey, hey, you need to talk about this, man, or you need to talk about that. 
finally I just said, fuck it, dude. You know, like I gotta, I gotta do this myself, you know, cause nobody can try to convey the message the same way that I can. Plus it probably come across as me being like a fanboy, you know what I mean? And I wasn't trying to be a fanboy. I was just like, there's something that people aren't talking about, like the 33rd parallel that kind of connects yeah. all these things. And it was, it was important for me to sort of get that point across that there's, there's a scientific aspect and a spiritual aspect of this that, you know, a, a, a part of the cryptid, a part, a part of the UFO aspect, that all of that is related to science and spirituality. And there's not a lot of talk about it. There is talk about it, don't get me wrong but not in the same way that I feel like that people like me who are, who are kind of awakened a little bit and want to hear more information about different things. Every time I would hear somebody talk about numerology with, with the number 33, they were always this close. And like, I would be like, I gotta, I gotta share my thoughts on that. So I think the boss there came up with the VHS had one. She, she has a whole story about being in Disneyland in California. I just had one. And uh, how the carousel in Disneyland used to be directly on the 33rd parallel. And exactly, there's also two other connecting points of like energy. And the only reason he even like looked into that is because he went there in 82, ran into a guy who was like, wow, look at this place. This is incredible. What is this? He was like old and gray and bearded. And he ended up giving his pass for the day. Hey, I'm out of here. You know, here's a, the pass is good for the park for like an hour and a half. Like 10 years. Later, eight years later, he's like looking for a book about Disneyland, and he's like, Oh, oh I know that guy. Wait a minute, he died in 1925 or 32 or whatever the hell it was. So he was like, What the hell is this? And he was like, He thinks it's a portal. It's like, even like Disneyland is built down into a dome so that the, that the power kind of swings back up and goes back into the carousel. And it was like, So there's so many things. And so I, I was in contact with you first because. I said I heard you on the San Tripoli's podcast. And I was like, oh, I'd love to have him on. This is great. And, um, and then I ran into Mr. Bosley. I can't his first name. And uh, I was like, okay, there's, this is interesting. Like, these things are matching up in my life. There's also these synchronicities that are happening, you know. And maybe, like, could you expound sure. a little bit? Like, what is, what is it about, like, whatever you do, that you, what was the catalyst or what made you go, I need to look into I'm getting it wrong. Thank you for setting that up for me. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, because typically, typically, you know, I'll just start talking about the 33rd. But it was really, you know, I started hearing stories from back home. I'm from the Charleston area and right in the middle of the National Forest in the Francis Marion National Forest. And um, I started hearing things, stories from family members my brother from other people and i started like saying oh that's interesting but then i got into the i, I just kind of put the story but by the way we've had stories my whole life we've had stories um i've heard stories my whole life about like um you know lights and orbs and different things in the in the area i'm from but fast forward a little bit later people were telling me stories friends and family i became interested in it but I was like, man, everybody has has these stories uh, around this area and I don't have any, like I didn't have any experiences. But fast forward a little bit more after I started having my awakening process, um, you know, I got into the, the conspiracy, then the paranormal and then the spiritual. That's yeah. typically mm -hmm. the journey you go on. And as I was in the paranormal world, I started seeing I, I'm I can I'm pretty good at patterns, pattern recognition. Like, I don't think I'm great at it, but I think I'm pretty good at seeing like a pattern of things. And I kind of, I could, I could, once I started watching all these things on different shows and reading these different books about like paranormal events, <clears throat> I started going, oh, that's in Georgia. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, that's in Alabama. Okay. Oh, that's in Roswell. Okay. And then as, as time went on, I started seeing like, oh, they're not, that's not far from each other as far as like a latitude line. And I remember seeing something a while back about um the 33rd parallel but this this had to have been in like 2008 or something along those lines and there was just i remember looking at it looking into it and there was nothing about the 33rd parallel whatsoever online and there's still nothing online about the 33rd parallel whatsoever so everything i'm talking about comes from experience of being some places 
and also a collection of information and data that I've uh, gathered over the many, you know, 10, 15 years, but especially over the last five years. So <clears throat> once I saw that, like there was these things happening on a certain in a certain on a certain line, you could pretty much draw a straight line from these things. Then I started seeing that, oh, wait a minute, that's that goes right across Charleston. That's where right where I'm from. That's weird. So then I went to like the National UFO Reporting web, dot org website. It's like there's a there's an acronym in I, don't, I can't even go, I can't even say it, but National UFO Reporting Center dot org. It's not a government website. It's a it's a place where the FAA will tell you to report um, any kind of U UAPs or UFOs or anomalous activities. So I found that interesting because I never heard that before. Went to the website started, you know, you can search different stories. You just millions of stories in there you can look through. And I, and I looked up some stories, um, from my hometown and I was surprised to find a ton of them in my area. And I went, Oh, that's in the national forest. 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 So then it became like, okay, it's, that was the catalyst. It became more like, all right, I got to look into this. I got to see what this is all about. And so it became, um, Almost like an obsession, I would say. Not really an obsession. It's no, it's a it's a heavy yeah. interest to me. So, like, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not super obsessed with it to the point where I'm like changing my whole life. But um, I am going to do a documentary about it because I want to try to convey visually what it's about, like what I'm talking about here. Because how strange, how how these strange things can all happen on an 80 mile wide line that goes around the world okay so um and what i meant by like i'll show you something real quick and what i meant by like i i, I collect baseball cards and stuff as well I, I don't get obsessed with it but but it, there has been this thing where once i started looking into the 33rd parallel stuff the th number 33 started appearing to me a lot more as well as if as if it was a sign like hey you're on that path you're on that right path keep going that's how i look at angel numbers and synchronicities and things like that so as I did that, things started coming in my life over and over and over again. And um, like my brother told me a story about a puck wedgie that was in the, in the woods, but was right beside his house. And his house is owned a 33.33333 parallel. And yeah. he's had, it's essentially a portal because he has he essentially has ghost activity in his house just coming and going. And he's had it for many years now. And uh, once he, he I had just watched the Bridgewater Triangle. And I, um, which is a, a documentary about this area in Massachusetts, and they were talking about puck wedgies. And then the next day, he told me the story about puck wedgie. Okay, so then I just want to show you these things real quick because I haven't done this yet on any show. So then, the next day, I buy and sell baseball cards and things like that. So the next day, I get a, I get this notification, and it's hard to see it, but this is a puck wedgie card, trading card. It's a puck wedgie trading card, and the number on it is numbered 33 out of 50 okay so then so again synchronicity started coming to me non-stop as if like that was that's your path you better go on that path and and there was a this is another one this is a okay this is a ufo okay that's a it's a ufo card signed by mike trout the baseball player right it's numbered 33 out of 50. this the next day this card showed up on my um on my feed on my ebay feed because because um like i said i buy and sell cards as well so so as these things started coming in my life and by the way um uh you know los angeles is on the 33rd parallel and he plays for the los angeles angels right so there's all kind of little connections there but so it became more like okay this is a sign for me to do something then it became like everything started having the number 33 in it in my life again as a sign so um i took the ball and ran with it but i but at first i was like i said messaging people and i was saying hey man you need to talk about the 33rd and people would be they were being nice oh that's that's nice thank you for reaching out but again you know and i and i listened to the confessionals the tony Merkel show and the confessionals and i would hear him talk about places like um um was it the joshua tree out in california I remember that episode. and Is that the episode that, it's the, that's on the 33rd the, parallel as well uh, so Oh, with the weird occultist and the, the tent that went up in the air. That one. Yeah, that's a great episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of people reference that that episode, but again, I was 
I would reach out to guys like him and wouldn't get any response. And that's not, yeah. that's not a knock on Tony. He just got a lot of people emailing him and stuff. Yeah. And so eventually I just decided I'm going to drive to one of these conferences that he's speaking at and talk to him. So that's what I did. I drove to a conference in Tennessee and I, and I talked to him about it and he was like, dude, I'd, I'd love to talk to you about this. So anyways, one thing led to another, I didn't really plan on doing a podcast. It was just like, I was yeah. wanting to give somebody yeah, else that information to, to the, take the ball the and leg, run with it. The leg work, yeah. the work to actually yeah, but, do that because you're like, this is one of the biggest podcasters in this type of situation, you know, in this field. And you're like, he can get it out there. And he's like, no, 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 no. You got to yeah. come on. You're like, yeah. okay, I guess I'm going to start a podcast now. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he kind of convinced me to come on and out because I was like, I was like, can we blur my face out and can we like, you, you, know, mute, you know, make my voice different and stuff. And oh, wow, okay. he's like, yeah, I did. Yeah. So, so, um, just a few months ago and I'm glad I did, man. I, I probably wasn't as, uh, crisp as I am now and what I know, cause I've read more books since then I've talked about it a little bit more. So it's a little bit more fluent for me to talk about the 33rd parallel, but like I was saying, man, what is essentially what it is, is, is a, it's about 80 miles wide. It's a, um, the 33rd degree North of the equator. That's a latitude yeah, line North of the equator. And that goes all the way around. Oh, wow. That I didn't know. Yes, there is. Yes. Yeah. So, so what I'm starting to think as well is that everything in this from 33 to 33 is highly energetically charged. Okay. Um, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's exactly like a straight line that goes around the world. And, but I think that there is, I look at it from the, from the view of like, if we zoomed out, we're looking at a circuit board, you know, the world, the globe as a circuit board. And I think it might be just like this main circuit that goes around and cause it's a zone of the earth. If we you all believe do in the here. earth around this earth, YouTube, right? Man. Um, <laughs> if, <laughs> so, um, but it's a, it's a, you know, it, it, it's a, what happens, it's, it's a warm part of the, the, the world, right? Everything in this, in this zone is, is pretty warm. It's pretty tropical climated. Um, and so there it's, it's possible that it, there is just a lot of people that live there. So that it's a coincidence that, you know, all these, these things are reported more because there's probably more people that live on a warm line. But when you look at, when you start looking at the geology of things and the topography of things, it becomes pretty clear that there's a connection to volcanoes. There's a connection to natural earth energies that that's um, causing this, these portals, is is the best way to describe them because they're like little vortexes of energy not not they're not little i mean they're like highly magnet highly electrical vortexes of energy and i'm starting to get into the world of like plasma science because plasma is is the stuff that it surrounds us right now it's like the ether it's like we're swimming in it just like fish are swimming in the ocean but a fish doesn't know they're swimming in the ocean they're just in the ocean right and so we're in this soup of ions that's, you know, positively and negatively charged ions that are just kind of floating out around. And just like when you touch a, um, a um, one of those little plasma balls, the lightning, the purple lightning, will, the tendrils will strike your finger. That's what these things are that, you know, from that's what these anomalous act, this, these uh, Bigfoots, these cryptids, these. UFOs, that's what they're, they are. They're, they're basically vibrating into our reality and they're forming based using the ions that are in the atmospheres that they're forming in. That's why a Yeti is white when he, you know, he falls. He's forming from the ions that are present in that area or a Bigfoot yeah, are you saying, uh, uses the ions. On this 80 degree line, or this 80 mile wide, uh, 80 miles wide uh, line of the earth than there is in other parts? Yeah, you know, because there's, there's, there's big sightings in like Minnesota, you know. No, I think that there's. You know what I'm saying? I'm just... Sure. Yeah. No, I. So let me explain. I don't think that 33rd parallel is the only one, but I talk about the 33rd parallel because 
There's a lot of the biggest ones wow. that happen, like Roswell, New Mexico, the, the, the Phoenix Boston? Lights, What's the, the Boston Battle Boston? of Los Angeles. Like literally, that's 1942, I believe, where the U.S. Army for two hours okay. were shooting at this thing that's hovering ringing, over the bell now. Yep. Um, off the coast of L.A. Right? It's they call it the Great Air Raid, um, and they blamed it on you know Japanese ship or japanese planes or something but this thing many people who who were there who witnessed it when they were kids talk about how they just they shot at this thing for hours they shot at the uh this thing in the sky for hours so it's pretty famous okay. it's the one of the lights pointing into the sky we all know that japanese all made quality products the, 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 the famous you know, photo right playstation for hours <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> But you know, like these, so like there's a big, there's a lot of big things that connect around the world, and so and so whenever like the Bermuda Triangle is on the thirty third parallel, it fits, it fits um, within that eighty mile. Um, you know, Atlanta's. It. Yeah, it's right at the it's right at the top, like the top of the Bermuda Triangle is, and so the Bermuda Triangle is a volcanic seamount, which means it's a dead volcano or an inactive volcano, but. What that means is, see, inside the Earth's core, um, there's metals, and it's an electromagnetic ball of energy that's shooting shooting off excess electricity, just the same way a turbine uh, a right. turbine does. You know, when it creates electricity from a dam, it it shoots off electricity. So these this electricity comes up, and it seeps out through volcanoes. It seeps out through streams. It seeps out through um caves and crevices and basically anything that a body of water anything that it can seep out through it seeps out and so it it what it is when these when these elect when these energies flow up to the surface of the earth they kind of spin based on they kind of spin in one area based on the when the sun is a lot of this stuff happens at 7 p.m you know a lot of the anomalous activity because when the sun is pushing against the magnetic field of Earth, it's bending that that magnetic field around. It's it's causing these little these little uh, currents called telluric currents to spin in one location. Okay, and what they do is they typically spin. Um, that's why a lot of places are built like pyramids and stuff are built on these ley lines, because and that's where the term ley line really is is it's a it's a line of energy that's spinning at certain times of day it, it doesn't happen it's not like a constant thing that happens all day it's something okay. that happens um right before you know it gets nighttime so so um yes. things like the pyramids are made of limestone and lim limestone can conduct electricity so when you get these vortexes of energy you know it it uh brings in or it allows like a like a, a port a portal an easier entrance for the, these things to vibrate into our reality okay so you're doing great, you're doing great brother Don't worry. um god man i kind of lost my train of thought there for a minute we got the, the triangle fits within <laughs> there you're talking about um, the seas and you're coming up and but, yeah well it it's a line that goes all the way across the world man i mean it, it, not a, it's an imaginary line it's a it's a it's a it's a force it's a, a vortex of energy that kind of spins in different circles. If you if you ever got if anybody listening gets a chance, pull up a, a map of telluric currents on Earth, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It spins. It's like little, it looks like little hurricanes that spins in, in one oh, little area, and, and a big like portion lines, of that is right in the lines on, on the 33rd the parallel. Just like little, that's why Disney like lines around it, but since they have like uh, dense gases and things of that nature, it's yeah. much easier to see compared to Earth, where the atmosphere is. Okay. Yeah, you can't see our, you can't see these currents. They're all around us. They're they're invisible currents, and so the the three states of matter are solid, <laughs> liquid, and gas, right? Well, there's actually four. There's four states, Sorry. right? The plasma is the fourth state, right? <laughs> As you mentioned, but just plasma. Um, there you go. <laughs> no, man, but when. When you heat, yeah. When you heat a solid, it becomes a liquid. When you heat a liquid, it becomes a gas. When you heat a gas, when the when the steam from a gas is heated up, it becomes plasma. It becomes like 
it basically tears the gas apart and becomes ions. And these ions are floating all around us. They're doing their, it's, it's, it's like, you know, how they say energy can't be created or destroyed, right? That's what that is. It, it's these ions that are just floating around in the air. So my theory on it is, is like, um, like I said, with the, with the cryptids, they can attach themselves to these ions that are kind of floating around in the air. And that's why they smell bad because they're decayed material that's just floating around in the atmosphere, in the atmospheres of, so, so the ionosphere, which is where the um, Aurora Borealis is, like that's all plasma. We can't, our satellites, our radios, our radio towers, they bounce off of the ionosphere. And so when satellites are pointing up in the air, they're not pointing into space. They're pointing to the ionosphere. And so that thing, the radio signal bounces off the ionosphere and back towards the satellite. So the point is, is like the ions that are uh, close to Earth, um, there's ions from here all the way to, uh, to the ionosphere. And that layer of the ionosphere is uh, kind of like it just that's as high as it goes. It floats to that high and, and um, it, everything in between is, is ionic, um, you know, plasma it's plasma that we're swimming in <laughs> so that's the best way to describe it so so when these things when these ufos vibrate into our reality they're actually vibrating into like they're using the materials and the elements and the water and everything that they can that's available to them to vibrate into our reality literally that's why they can just come and go and dematerialize uh in the blink of an eye but more importantly it's an electromagnetic again Everything in this world is electromagnetic energy. We are electromagnetic beings to our very, at our very quarks, we vibrate, our quarks vibrate. These two little balls, they, at the subatomic level, they vibrate. And when they vibrate, they put off a, a, a wavelength, a frequency, okay? They, but it requires, there's, it, it, in that right. frequency, put the, the faster something is, the hotter something is, okay? So something that vibrates into our reality is coming in from is coming in from an area that we can't see that is much hotter than ours. Okay. And so because in order to heat plasma, in right. order to, you know, what do they what do they typically come in as? A ball, a orb, right? Every time it starts with an orb. And that's what that is. It's a flowing, it's a it's a ball of plasma, uh, it's a plasma orb that's kind of flying yeah, around. Had a guy on and then it kind of materializes into something. He was sitting so, out there, you know, they, they, these people, you know, were having Bigfoot problems. And he went out there with a buddy of his, and he seen this one of them, I think there's multiple, but one of these balls of light, it was maybe the size of a basketball, got really close to him. And then his buddy shined a flashlight on it, and it turned into a possum hissed at him, hissed at him, and ran away. That's right. That's exactly it. And I think that's why when they, these, when they, that's why cryptids never look the same. That's why they, they always have a different shape or, you know, they, they look, they're tall, they're short, they're, you know, one leg's longer than the other. This, you know, this one had hair and that one's muscled up. And it's because I think yeah, that they're, they're using what's avail available to them you know they look like a possum because <laughs> there's possum things in the air so you know and you know like uh my my brother saw something that he said looked sickly but he not he, he's like i'd never seen anything like it before in my life and he said it was like a half um fox and half deer but he's like it looks sickly and he said it was weird it moved weird and he's like, I can't never, I can't really describe it. And, you know, of course there are people who are out there going to look for certain animals online who have, who fit that description, of course. But the way he described like it was, like it was something. moving weird as like nothing he's ever seen before. And I've heard of these, yeah, kind of like a slow, before. like, you know, weird, scary movie crawl. Had a head, but no arms. It was like half deer, yeah. half clay or something. It, 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 yeah, dude, that makes a lot of sense. So like, so a possum error, how do we possibly maybe make this a product that people can buy <laughs> so that when they see orbs, they can just throw possum error on it? <laughs> it's just so, so cool. I love that point of view. Dude. That's so cool. I think these... Well, it's actually... Um, so what I talk about isn't, isn't exactly... Um, 
it's not unknown because, and I'll see if I can pull it up for you real quick. Oh, here it is. I'm going to read something for you. This was from the FBI files and the black files, the black vault on the FBI files. Okay. And it said, this is describing UFOs, for example. Okay. Part of the disc carry crews. Others are under remote control. Their mission is peaceful. The visitors contemplate settling on this plane. These visitors are human-like, but much larger in size. They are not excarnate earth people, but come from their own world. They do not come from any planet, as we use the word, but from an etheric planet, again, ether, um, which interpenetrates within our own and is not perceptible to us. Okay. We can't see it. It's, it exists in us, within us, within this plasma ball we're in or flat earth or whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> and it says the discs possess a type of radiant energy or a ray, which will easily, wait a minute. Oh, I missed the part. Okay. The bodies of the visitors and the craft also automatically materialize on entering the vibratory rate of our dense matter. Okay. So that's a pretty important statement. That means exactly what I just said. Like they're vibrating into our reality because if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, and I know I've said this a lot for anybody who's heard me on any show, I've said this a lot, but I'll say it again. Like we are in the visible light spectrum. We're in on the electromagnetic spectrum. If you're looking at the electromagnetic spectrum, we are in the visible light of the electromagnetic mag magnetic spectrum. What you cannot see is infrared microwaves, radio waves. Okay. That's on one side. On the other side is X-ray, gamma rays and ultraviolet rays. Okay. We can't see both of them. One is going so slow. I mean, it's so cold. It's so cold. It's going like a super slow vibratory rate. Because what did I tell you? Our, our matter, all matter in this visible spectrum that we're in, <clears throat> or in the visible light that we're in, vibrates at a certain, we have, we have a steady rate that we vibrate at. Okay. These things are, we're in the perfect zone. We're warm. We're, we're neither cold nor hot. We're warm. The things that are in the radio waves, infrared waves, they're vibrating at a very slow, slow vibration because they have no heat whatsoever, almost no heat. And so it's very cold. It's very, it's, it's um, unbearably cold. On the other side of that, it's unbearably hot because ultraviolet rays are vibrating at a much faster level. So if any... For anything to come into our reality, it's pretty easy for them to slow down their vibrations to come into our reality, but it's not easy for us to raise our vibrations to get into to their reality. And it's not easy for us to, what's that? Is that where you, is that where you were going? I'm sorry, I, I, I know you're from some that's building exactly maybe, right. but yeah. that's what I feel like. I think we are raising our No, no, that's right. That's exactly right, man. We're, that's it. They can't, and we are going to be a part of some type of yep. and they can't stop it. God, it's a no. type plan that these lower vibrational ones are trying to move us by. Maybe that's what we're talking about. <clears throat> yeah, so, so if you, and I've said this I before as well, fear vibrates at four hertz, which means it vibrates very slow as well. Okay. So if they keep us, if they keep us on the side of fear, then these demonic entities in the unseen world of the infrared, the, the invisible spectrum on the left side of it, they can attach them, their disembodied spirits to yep. our body. So they keep us in a constant state of fear, a constant state of low vibrations. When you're in, when you're in a high vibratory state, they can't touch you no matter what. That's why that dude, that's why they call it spirits, man. You know, that's why when you drink, you're allowing a spirit into you. You're literally, you're literally lowering your vibrations and you're letting a spirit into you. And, you know, you can tell them to get out, but once they're in you, they're going to stay there like a parasite. But they're demons, dude. That's what they are. They're fucking demons. They're 100% demons that hate us. And if you think... So you're saying that alcohol lowers your vibration. Do you think that maybe psychedelics raise your 
I think it, I think it can probably uh, temporarily raise our right. vibrations. That's why I think when people do DMT, it only lasts for 15 minutes or something like that, right? Or any kind of other, other side. I mean, I've never had any personal experience with it, but I've only heard those stories. Um, and I think it's a, it's a temporary thing. It almost speeds I mean, up yes. your vibrations in a way. Yes. And that's why I think when you have that, that word, like boo, 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 and you almost take off, shoot through like a that's what I think that is, it's so right? It's like, yeah, dude. yeah, you're going through, you're going through the levels of vibration or vibratory, uh, rate that, you know, we, cause it, you know, when they say we're, we're made in God's image. God is light. God, we're made in God's image. Literally, it says it everywhere in the Bible. That's what that means, man. We are literally made in God's image. We are in the visible spectrum. We're in the visible light. And demons hate us. And I think these aliens hate us too. I think that they, everybody wants to get where we are in the perfect zone because it's too hot where the aliens are and it's too cold where the demons are. And they're trying to attach themselves to our bodies. And these UFOs, these aliens are trying to abduct right, so our people so they can interbreed with them to bring them to our, our reality, you, right? How do you rise above that? You can go higher in your mind, in your, in your, you know what I'm Where's the positivity in that? Well, I don't, think that, I don't think that the vibration rate, so if we're looking at it linearly, I don't think that either side is, is our, is, we're not rising to the level of either side. We're rising okay. up. We're like, we're ascending up the ladder. We're not, we're not going left and right. We're going up the ladder. Okay. So in God's light is up the ladder. This other stuff is, you know, just other realities or something. They're, they're not our reality. They're not, we're made in God's image. We're the only ones who can create life, for example. And that's why the demons hate us. And that's why they want us to have abortions. And that's why they want us to, have wars and that's why so they, they want to kill us off because, because they saying, like, they hate us to, like, because we are made in god's image things, and they're not and i eventually it leads you to spirituality so interesting because i i completely concur with that <clears throat> yeah and the spirituality also coincides with science a little bit. And this is not a sign. I'm not a Scientologist or I don't believe in the, you know, there's a, there's a religion. Science is a religion for people. And I'm not saying that I'm saying that God is, you can't extract, extract God out of the science of everything around us. God is science. There is no other science. It's just God. It's there. Science doesn't exist. We're just talking about the magic there, you, in the awesomeness of God. We're not talking about BS, you, you know, Carl Jung or whoever. Both, man, all of it. I'm, I am, uh, everything is about Christ for me and God. Okay. Cause Christ is the, is the, um, the flesh version of God, right? And what, what Christ was saying is that, you know, the only way to, to God, the only way to be able to live in the light of God is through him. And what happens, and you can, and anytime you have somebody on that talks about their experiences with being abducted or, you know, shadowy yeah. figures or, you know, so whatever, Absolutely in, anytime you say the name of Christ, these things stuff. disappear, Absolutely. they go, yeah. they run away. So, yeah, so. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I've, and since I joined the fight, since I joined the spiritual battle, because that's what we're in, we're in a spiritual battle. Since I joined that battle, man, people told me like Tony, like my preacher, other people, they told me things are going to happen to you, you know, and, and it, they have like entity, some kind of a shadowy entity tried to hold me down twice now at night. And, wow. you know, I like, smash me whenever I sleep and try to smash my face down into the pillow. Yeah. And I said, I said, not, I barely got the name of Christ out. And as soon as I did, that thing went. Absolutely. And then it, you know, it, yeah, I'm a spiritual person too. It's the religion, not the faith. Yeah. It's the books that bother me and what people have done to it. I think they were trying to explain something that they stumbled upon that was so powerful that they didn't know what to do with it. But at the same time, there's always somebody who wants to take that and make people under them, which is probably, you know, in the eyes of a religious person, the devil. 
So there's some of that in there too. But I do know for a fact that if you invoke the name of Jesus Christ in these situations, that they do run away and disappear. That is that is one hundred percent true. Interesting. Interesting. One hundred percent true. It, it's it's true for anybody and everybody. You say the name of Christ. And they and these things run away. And so when you have the light of God, when you're being when you're when you live in the light of God, and what that means to me is when you live in this abundant state or the state of uh, gratitude and abundance and love for everybody, then you kind of have this force field around you. You raise well, your vibrations to become well. closer to God. Just now, right I'm not saying that uh, you become a God. I'm saying you you I think love is one of the highest vibrations you can possibly have. I mean, love for a plant, uh, a fellow person animal, whatever it may be, when you do that, other yes. people see that and you're automatically attracted to the goodness of you. And there's other people who are attracted to you for the wrong reasons too, because they want to vampirically attach themselves to you and you have to be able to recognize. Well, I said that I said that fear vibrates at 4 hertz. Love vibrates at 532 hertz. So... All right. Oh, this is look it up online. Yeah, you have to look it up online. I mean, I'm not studying science myself or anything. You know what I mean? I'm not studying the, the vibrations. I can only take what people have told me online or, you know, through academic peer, uh, peer reviewed papers and things like that. Journal, uh, real, real journals that I'm, I'm, so, I'm citing here. Um, so, so we're literally talking about like fear vibrating. You know, you're at a low hum right. and then love you're when you're vibrate at a higher level. That's what that means. You're you're living in love, like a, you're 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 spreading the love, the light of God. You're you're vi you're literally glowing. You know you're, 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 you're you have this vibration that's God-like, not God, God but like it's a glow about you that well you're now. you're shining God's light in my. That's 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 killer, dude. That's killer. So, I noticed that like, I used to be a staunch atheist for a long time. Yes, it's just long, long time. Like fifteen years. Yeah, man. So. And I don't know, it just things slowly yeah. started to work themselves into the fact where I was just like, okay, I don't like religion. Is it, to me, it's a middleman. It's a middleman. It's like, you know, like I can just go right to the factory itself. I go right to I go right to Mercedes and get myself an S series directly from Mercedes. Or I go to this middleman and he throws a bunch of stuff in there I don't want. I want it, I want the, the source. And I've I've personally found it myself, you know, and it's for me. It's for me. And, uh, yes, it's good, man. Yeah. God is personal to everybody. You know, God is within all of us. Like that's the thing is like, and he wants us to express himself right <laughs> through. And that's why I say when, yeah. when they, when someone says, I saw the light, like, you know, as in like, as an expression of like, you know, I finally saw the light. I came to Christ or like, that's what that means. It's like, you're literally seeing the light, man. You, you know, Again, you know, and I and I had a strong I have I've had some amazing women in my life and men that have guided me. Like my grandma, for example, has shown me what That's living in the light means, That's dude. I mean, allowing she adopting kids and allowing everybody to come she's live with her and do I mean she was pure Yeah, she was pure light, dude. Pure light. And it's a word I've never heard you know, I had to literally look it up. <laughs> go, she said what? What is that? And oh, yes. it was like a, there was a thunder in the sky and it was, everything was kind of like very, not pastel, but very <laughs> bright and colored. There was a thunderstorm that shook the ground and I just heard the, the voice of God in her, but it was her voice. But it, you can tell at the same time. And it's one of those powerful dreams I ever had. And I was just like, okay, I'm starting to freak myself out here. What is, what is going on? But at the same mm -hmm. time, it wasn't. When I kind of like, it's not like letting your guard down. It's not the acceptance. It's just kind of like letting go. <laughs> It doesn't mean you're letting go of your faculties of what's right and wrong. Uh, we know that the sun is hot. We know that the water is cold. We know a lot yes. of things. But at the same time, it's this. It's just, it's hard to describe. It's a very personal thing. Yeah. yeah, listen, they, you know, there's a saying that says, let go and let God. And that's what that means to me. It's like when you just start living as a vessel for God, and you just like let you just say let use me how you want, God. 
you know, and then all of a sudden things come into your life, man. It's unbelievable. I'm not saying to to try to convince God of one thing or another. I'm trying to tell you that. Yeah. I'm talking about love, right? I'm talking about. Yeah, when you when you do things out of your heart, out of abundance, when you have a, a voice to talk to someone and an ear to listen, a hug to give, if you have extra money to give, if you have um you know, I, I collect baseball cards and if I have extra cards, I give them away to kids all the time on baseball team that I coach. And, you know, things kind of always come back to me, man. It's so bizarre. I gave away a baseball card to a, of a player, one of my favorite players, and I gave it his, it's a Hispanic player of all time. Um, uh, well, currently it's probably Bryce Harper. I mean, and he's, I'm a big Bryce Harper fan, but I'm also a big Jonathan Aranda fan. And um, he plays for the Tampa Bay Rays. He's a young guy, plays for the Tampa Bay Rays. And he's a Hispanic kid. And then there's a Hispanic right. kid on my team that is his first year playing baseball. And I gave him that card because I wanted him to have like a, a role model, you know. And I did that out of pure love. I didn't care to get anything in return from that, from giving him that card. And I didn't have like, oh, if I give this card away, God's going to give me something in return. It was it it was just pure love and like I didn't expect anything from it. Later on that night, wow. Jonathan's dad, Jonathan the baseball player's dad, bought some cards from me on eBay of wow. his son. And and I messaged him and I said, Are you related to him? He said, Oh, I'm his dad. I was like, Wow, that's crazy. So his dad and I um became friends, I guess you could say, over eBay, just talking and and um not long after that, his son invited me to a game as a special guest and Dude, we got flooded with like just showered with gifts right, of autographed baseball like, bats you know, and baseball I cards and hats and balls sure. and everything. And we were special guests, do, dude. And uh, you can't always do great yeah. things, but you can do little things with great love. <sighs> with that power, the power you have to affect someone's life. <laughs> is immeasurable man and when you live in that love right. constantly i'm not perfect i yell at my kids i cuss i do all kind of bad things i drink still sometimes but right uh, i'm not perfect i'm not saying i'm not sitting here and saying that i'm this perfect guy but i'm telling you that in my heart i have no hate towards anybody it's nothing but pure love i want everybody to succeed i don't have i don't really want anybody to fail um and i and i honestly do things out of love all the time for people man and it's it's hard to explain um cuz cuz it's an unselfish way to be about life that just has to be pure yeah, it has to be like a pure it's an ego trip cuz you yeah, can't just you yeah, can't just give something away and be like okay god here's my yeah where's my reward now you know it's like yeah it's like it's like god knows that you 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 like that thing whatever that thing is and you gave it away to, to for the benefit for the love of so, someone oh, else so that, and he rewards you in that in some way you know like whether it oh, whether it's right. in the right, form of money that. or it in the form of to get that you just help me help me understand that. right yeah and it's a and it's about tithing like it, like when they say the tithing is giving 10 percent, that's what i think it it means is to give 10 percent of something no, it's not literally a 10%. And it's not a percentage. It's literally, if you have purpose. something, that's not give, give a little bit of away and it'll come back to you, you know, tenfold. Because that's what happened, man. I gave. Because it feels great. And you're doing it for someone else. Gives yeah. love, which also feels. Yes. We're all. Yes. Yeah, I mean, how, how many times when you hold a door for someone, how good does it feel you know when you I say, yeah, when you, know you and I, uh, I the lady at Chick-fil-A who's taking your order, taking your order have a moment, and you're like, oh, no, thank you, man. No, thank you, honey. I appreciate it. It's like, and it throws them off. A lot of people will smile immediately. A lot of people are like, what does he want from me? Because they've had that experience. But for a second, they're not doing it. Your yeah. job to pay bills to feed your family for a second. Yeah. There's a connection. And I, I'm not doing it for a connection. Just, it's just a cool thing to do to call people by their name when they're doing a service job. Things like that, little things like that, mean a lot to people. Yeah.
it matters. It lights up people's world when you just tell them they smell nice or they look nice or, you know, you literally can change people's lives day to day with just simple things, man. And if you feel something, if you feel like, you know, God's <laughs> telling you to tell that person <laughs> that he smells good or he looks nice, you know, it doesn't have to be no homo involved. It doesn't have to be a homo <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? But yeah, who cares, right? It's like, if it's out of love, who cares, man? But, uh, you know, I, I just really feel, I believe that, man. I believe that if you, you know, I went, I've told this story before on other podcasts, but you know, I went to the daddy daughter dance and I was out there dancing and I feel like this is how, this is a metaphor for my life. I'm out, I'm out there dancing on the dance floor with my daughter and having the time of my life, yeah. just dancing, having a great time. And all these other dads are just standing there almost like jealous that they're not out there doing that. And I'm, and I'm dancing in life. That's what I'm literally feel like I'm doing right now. I'm dancing with right. God in a way that's like, um, that you can't explain until you just do it. You're just, you're riding the wave of love and light and God. And, and man, I look around me, dude, I grew up in a trailer park. I grew up down a dirt road. Like when I look around, I live in a, now I live in a nice house in a four or four acres in a nice neighborhood. And I'm like, how the fuck did I get this? You know, cause none of it makes any sense to me. The things I've done, the places I've been, the only thing that I can say, the only common denominator has always been I've self unselfishly lived for others my whole life, you know, and I feel like God rewards me in some way with that, man. And because even being on shows like Sam's or Tony's or whoever, that shit doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it to makes me, no sense for like, the dream. You know, people, matter of fact, people will ask me, like, you just started podcasts and how did you get on these shows? And I'm okay. like, I don't know. That's, that's amazing. I just, I'm, I've always said that if nothing makes me happier than seeing someone doing something that they love to do, yeah. it could be. When you, uh, yeah. when you say yes, concrete, man, concrete, like that's what it's, that's so cool, dude. It's like when you say yes to things, it's like, you know, because no is such a negative way to be. You can't do this or you can't do that. That's a negative, low vibration thing, you know? And when you learn that you have this power to create, that we are like individual magnets of energy, that when you start, when we're flowing through this ether of ions, and we are a magnet of positive energy, the positive ions are going to flow with you. And you're going to attract things in your life that just, just all of a sudden you're like, how the fuck did this happen, dude? And I, and I can't, I can't describe anything that happens to me other than that, other than I'm just living my life and I'm living my highest passions as well. I think you have to live a passion. You have to do what makes you, yeah, what lights you up, you know, what makes you happy. Yes. Water, air. Yeah. Television. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man, it's. Thanks, man. No, dude, I just think that, you know, tying, tying it back into a, the 33rd parallel, mm -hmm. man, it just became, it becomes like, I think that there are evil people out there hijacking our, taking our loosh, as uh, Sam always says, or, you know, hi hijacking our energy. And they purposely keep us at a low vibration because that, that's what they are. They're exactly that. They're energy vampires. And they do through they do they take our energy through our food through our media through our broadcast channels um yeah in most of these line most of these areas where they broadcast from remember they're casting broadcasting casting right. a spell um on the television and um you know they're they're doing it a lot of times on these on ley lines right the hollywood is on is in la on the 33rd the new hollywood is in it georgia it right. in atlanta georgia it's like letting the them, it's like so letting like the they're, they're constantly putting out things on the it's like if yeah. there's an amplification a, a stream of energy coming from one one area they're amplifying their message from these areas all it's no coincidence that all of these um capital buildings are built on top of ley lines there's one in jackson mississippi that's built on the top of a of a volcano. And so they're literally getting a direct energy source from this volcano. And what, what happens, what I mean by that is like, you know, they're this stream of energy coming through and when they amplify their spell, when they spell words out, that's spelling, right? 
when they write oh, their law, that that's law what they're doing. They're casting a spell. The trick is, though, they have to get us to believe everything. We have to consent to everything. If we don't, then they, they don't, then they, their spell doesn't work. Yeah. So they, yep, exactly it. That's exactly right, dude. Yeah. So yeah. to me, man, there, a lot of this stuff is happening on the 33rd and they, they are, um, sacrificing on the 33rd as well as a right. homage to the fallen angels who fell the 33% of angels who fell on the 33rd parallel at Mount Hermon. Okay. Um, uh, that's who they're worshiping. They're saying, yeah. and everything they do is always 33, man. It's like unbelievable how much in, in, they, it's a genius. It's like yeah, the internet, the internet's the, the same Scottish right. Let that go. The Scottish right Freemason Freemasonry. Now, that's in, to, that's the 33rd, uh, down. Scottish like, oh, right Freemasonry, um, headquarters is in Charleston, yeah. which that's, is on the 33rd, which is on top of a fault line, which is on top of the biggest fault line, no. right? It's like. So again, right on top of an energy center, right? And then they're doing their magic on these energy centers, but then they're also the paying the homage party, to, the see, the there, there's a duality. They're, they're worshiping, a, they're worshiping a, it's whoever the they are, the and they're worshiping <laughs> the evil ones. And they're getting rewarded in the form of like technology and medicine and advancements and so they can enrich themselves. I do a little but bit differently. Again, I do a little bit they differently. will never win. Right. Because I mean, because once people once people have the light, once the light comes out, man, it's you can't stop it. You can't put the light back in a jar. It's coming, man. The... I, I do a little bit differently. I'm a, I'm a very uh, what's the, uh, extroverted person. Extreme extrovert. That's where Stanton comes from. Like, I'm like, uh, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, but, uh, but they can't stop us stars, from talking uh, to each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. They can't, sure they can't me. stop us from well, do, talking to I each other at our houses or at I the grocery store. store. I talk to people hey, everywhere I go, dude, hey, you know, and I, and hey, I try to wake people up everywhere I go. It's not I this. Yeah, I'm that guy. I don't give a fuck, dude. I'm out there talking about that shit. Who are you? And I'll be like, yeah, this and the other. I'm really that guy. And people always like, oh boy, here we go. I'm like, you're going to hear it because I'm going to plant this seed one way or another, whether you want it or not. And sometimes sometimes people people can get annoyed with that and i get it but um i've learned to get i've learned to um to not do it so heavily right to just go those those lines in the sky straight clouds that's weird that's weird you know like uh normally it never happens it really really it doesn't and uh but normally i was here being in mexico like there's another thing that happens that happened to me when coming here uh because i live in germany And in America before that, and these were like highly advanced technological places, you know, with, you know, with affluency. And not all of them, of course, you know, America was a lot of places that are messed up, and I think that's intentionally as well. Um, also, a direct pollution and things of that nature. You get in another podcast, I guess. But when you come here and you see these people struggling, and they work. Yeah, for sure. You've got a well paying job here. So sweet, so kind, and all. I just because I'm such a unicorn, you know, so I'm a big, tall, white guy, uh, with blue eyes, and a full beard because I'm in my territory here with blue beards. And you'll see a kid, you know, went to the medical place here with my girlfriend the other day, and kids are just like staring at me. I mean, like hard too. And I just smile at him. I just say, you know, I say in English, hello, because I might be the ambassador or some other future event for them. So when they go, oh, there was this time I didn't think an American guy, and I don't dislike him. Because our foreign policy is completely different than Americans, and people don't get that. A lot of people are like that, but funny people, I call them blue hair, crazy people. But there's also the people who are like the salt of the earth, you know, yeah. and, uh, it doesn't matter which side of the political structure, but like people who go out every day, work hard, work just good people. But they yeah. only see the, you know, the, uh, yeah. the craziness that is portrayed in our media. So what I do is I'm kind of like an ambassador 
for that. And I draw people come to me, and there's little kids with a company, and they're like, oh yeah, you know, uh, I like playing basketball, oh, me too, let's go. And then I'll take them to the park and show them how to do some passes and some dribbling drills. And, you know, just that's the thing that people don't see when you're in these, you know, these big cities like the Detroit Bumble or uh, you know, Charleston, Frankfurt, London. You just have everything right there. You can go get any food you want. And here, it's just, I have an extreme appreciation for the luck that I had to be born in the place that I was. And the people here have more connectedness to God. They're very religious here. I'm a super Catholic. Um, they're much more connected with the community and their families. And that's how they hold together. It's a much tighter knit family than it is in the places that you and I were born. Right. Every design. Yeah. Weirdos. Yeah. Wow, I've never even seen that dude. I've never even seen Yeah, if you think about if you think about what family provides, it's love. And so when you when you need love, you come back to that center and it charges you back up. And we have we if you look at everything going on in our world right now, the media, uh, Disney movies, whatever, it's all like the the kid that leaves his stupid family or her stupid family goes out and finds her own, you know, collective group of weirdos. Right. This is every Disney movie. Right. Every Disney movie is the same way. They leave their family, their conservative dad or their overbearing dad or whatever, and then they go out and find their new family, yeah, yeah. which is a just bunch of sure, other, sure, you sure know, lost souls. <laughs> uh, and and so they're trying to they're trying to uh, tear us apart, man. They're trying to tear our our nuclear family. So how far? Is, how far is the world? Yeah, they they literally, literally are like sh they're literally that's like uh, that just you know tearing us chance. apart at they the seams to where we can't recharge our light, man. You know, it's just they it's 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 weird. It's weird that people are buying into it. It's even family members I have that grew up very conservative and family oriented are kind of like uh, they're growing. You know, maybe oh, they'll get back. Maybe they'll come back to it eventually in life. Um, but they've just been conditioned, man, their whole life to to go. Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm going to, you know, do my own thing with my own friends. And not, I'm not going to come home for this Thanksgiving because you know, I got this other thing going on or whatever the case is. And, and, and what they do with COVID is the same thing, you know, sorry to use the word on your show, but it was, it's some crazy things here. Sorry, man. I've heard some crazy things here. Too. Like, yeah, no, no. But I'm, my point is, is like, you couldn't, see, you couldn't hug your family. You couldn't see your family. Right. They, they are very strange. Yeah. Like, you know, get married and they want to do yeah. less than yeah, and, and also, uh, it's like six feet of, of aura that you can't connect with someone, right? So your light and your energy can't affect that person if you're not hugging them, if you're not standing near them. And so when y'all when y'all love, yeah, and that's where that's where the the benefit of church comes in actually is because now there's a lot of problems with churches obviously, but the benefit of church is the community aspect of it is the um, having people that will throw baby showers for you and, you know, whether it's done in haste or not, whether it's done out of pure love or not, that's, that's different, but at least there's people who. Yeah, I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. But 
But again, if you think about church now, there's no explanation for that, obviously. But if you think about church, when you go somewhere, when you go into a beautiful, beautiful, uh, old Gothic style looking church, what happens is, is there's the healing time. cymatics, there's Somehow, sound cymatics that can heal your vi- that can get your vibrations right. back so, aligned before I get you with out of the here, healing vibrations of the world. So, like, and what happens with organs, choir, people, the, the literal building itself is perfectly geometrical. If you record the cymatics of the building, it's perfectly geometrical. So, so just being in a church, you know, and hearing choirs and hearing people sing and the the love you feel from other people if you take away preachers and pastors and and um just have each other have communion amongst each other amongst each other that's where that's where you're aligning your vibration to is is that you know you're healing in these places that's what churches are that's what they're supposed to be that's what they have been historically but they've been corrupted by people who you know are i don't know in it for themselves yeah, they won't. They Absolutely. won't. Okay. okay, all right. Oh, okay, that's great. All right. Nothing. Well, I, it's one of my favorite things in the world, man. Busting balls. I mean, if my, if I have comedy, if I have comedy friends that are all door, because that's we all kind of met in Germany. And I tell you what, if you walk in that door with the wrong shirt on, good luck. <laughs> but it was yeah, the that's church. It was that is church. We're talking about church. There's always you and I. You know, can't take a joke. But yeah, no, no. You and I are having church right now. That's my point. It's not a. It's not a place. Oh, I love that stuff. Right. Yeah, it's not a place that you go to necessarily. It's a no. There are literal buildings you go to for healing for, for that. But yeah, you can have church anywhere you go as long as you're having as long as you're sharing love and light. And that's what that's why barbecues are awesome. That's why you know that's why we are friends in the military is because yeah. it yeah, becomes like this. It's nothing but even if yeah. you're busting each other's balls, man, it becomes Brothers, nothing Brothers but love, a love fest America. for each other, really, oh. and a celebration of life Talk and love about, with each other because that's what it is, man. It's like. It's to be is, is, is evilness, whatever it may be, whatever yeah. word you use in your vocabulary, and the positivity what we've been talking about as well. What would be your message to people uh, in the world to yeah. raise their vibration <laughs> to come up? How would you, what would you say to them to make them feel that they're a part of something instead of feeling so alone? This is what I'm trying to say. Well, I think it's just a good way to remind your ego that you know, your ego is horseshit. You know what I mean? It's a reminder, like you're you're not too, my brothers, I got two brothers and they do the same thing to me. Like they remind me all the time, you know, just because you do this, don't, don't mean that you're shit. You still ain't shit to me, you know, that kind of stuff. So they'll they'll bust your balls and they'll, they'll bring you down to the reality pretty quickly. So. I just think that starting jumping on top of you there, but um, I just think that um, living whatever passion it is that you you really want to live can can help raise your vibration because then life doesn't become like this prison where you got to go to work every day and you got to do this and you got to go to this and you got to it just becomes too much of a cycle that you can't break through. It's literally a shackle. It's a circle. It's a never ending circle. It's a shackle that that connect that nobody's happy going to the work, the jobs they do, you know, no, nobody, nobody is living for themselves anymore. It's it's like people are afraid to just speak how they feel. People are afraid to be who they are. 
I got to go to work because I got to have my, my insurance and I got to have this. And you, you don't have to be anything. You just have to exist in, in the, in the now that you are and live in light and love. And man, you will have everything you want in life. You will have an abundance of everything, man. You'll have a, an abundance of food. And because God always provides to those who, in my opinion, to those who, um, Wow. who are, you and I are living so in that light. Not, no, I started a business seven years ago, the, quickly. The, the and when I left, I was ago. terrified. I had a baby, I had a little you're girl on the way. So it was like six years ago. I had a little girl on the way, um, but I, I quit my job. And I just knew that I couldn't do that anymore. And so I opened my parachute and I jumped. And I was afraid that it was going to not open. But, you know, because there were, there was a, there was a few months where I had like 50 cents in my bank account, but I always had this unshakable faith that no matter what, something will come, right? Like it's going to come and it always does, man. Every time my bank account gets low, dude, I'm always like, I have this moment of brief moment of like, what am I going to do? But then I have this unshakable drive and determination that it'll never happen and it's because such, it's such and an enlightening and empowering thing but yeah. i was scared and i'm still kind of scared but less scared and i realized the more <laughs> i just kind of like let it flow but you, 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 you can't just wait around you can't like just wait around for yeah. something to happen because nothing ever will you have to actually go out there too and push some buttons look for opportunities you know and say oh i could do that well that's a business idea that hasn't existed before here and i can go do that and that's what people are afraid to do. That that safety net of, you know, I, I live in my cul-de-sac and I get to watch my Netflix series and my shows, but I have to do this something that I absolutely hate every day is this dichotomy that tears them apart. And uh, that's what we, yeah, that's what we're saying, yeah. What if you fall down? <laughs> what if you fall down? Yeah. Let it flow. Right. Not right. There you go, baby. <laughs> That's awesome. Brad Bradley. We're here, dude. We're here. One more time, dude, before I let you go. First of all, thank, thanks again so much for coming on. Um, let everybody out there know where they can find your stuff, dude, because I think you have a message that yeah. needs to be heard for sure. It's, a, it's the fear. It's the fear of, they, they keep you in fear with like, well, you're not going to have insurance and, you know, how are you going to pay your bills and all this? But, well, my point is, is huh? Yeah. I mean, you, but you will never be able to live a life if you're constantly like, in this fear, this state of fear, I have this, like, <laughs> no matter what I'm going to make, I'm going to do this. Or I'm going to do that. This I'm telling you, it's unbelievable how much faith I have in myself and, and how much faith I have in God to just use me how he wants and let things happen. I mean, we built a house and my wife was like, we will never be able to <laughs> yeah. afford it. Yeah, well, we're we're deal, here, dude. you know, we're like, doing it. You know what I mean? Like, this show is gonna be we're, like, we're, okay, we're well, living just, in it, man. So. You know, but it's, it's, it's good to be a little, you know, affirmation does help you keep moving, but at the same time, you have to be weary of the. Thanks, man. Yeah. You can find me again at, at theawakenpodcast.com and, uh, and I'm on, I'm on Spotify as well. I'm on, uh, uh, Instagram at the awakened podcast 33. Um, that's my Instagram handle. And, uh, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm trying to keep a, a small digital footprint. I'm not trying to get too crazy with it, but I will expand into, <laughs> I will expand into other, you know, platforms, like I said, like Apple podcasts and some other stuff, just, just, just to try to get the message out a little bit more. Uh, I'm doing pretty well with Spotify, man. I'm blessed to have some followers and anytime someone follows me, it shocks me. I'm like, why would you listen to me? But, um, but you know, it's like, yeah, but it,
Yeah, man. And so, yeah, but that's where you can find me, Matt. Uh, at, uh, I'm eventually going to, like I said, do a, um, a documentary on the 33rd. Um, me and my little brother, we're just going to get some, a camera, some camera equipment and drive across the United States. Um, the 33rd parallel goes all the way overseas as well. It crosses the Middle East. Wow, I that was great. That, but, That's a conversation. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to go over there, <laughs> but uh, I will start. I will start the uh, documentary off by trying to trying to talk about some of the things that happened, just the, the magical things that happened in this on this line, and, and the strange things that happened on this line in the United States is the best the best I can. So um, I'm not asking for uh, money or anything like that. You know, just support the show in any way you can, because eventually, if you follow the show, you know, people will start wanting to like maybe um, support. Maybe they want to sponsor the show or something like that. So if you follow me, that will help me play. Um, I'm not asking for money from anybody right now at this moment, but uh, uh, I appreciate all the, the love and support that everybody's given me. And um, man, thank you again for having me. This has been an amazing conversation. I really loved it. Just you tell that he's doing it for the right reasons, and I'm hopefully doing it for the right reasons as well. And like what I do, like and subscribe to me as well. And remember, this is the I Jupiter podcast, and we are the I.